during this week. The charity envelopes are available at the entrances to the cathedral. And the second collection is the fuel and maintenance offering. Thank you. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, Lord, mercy. have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of, in the, of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, so that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O oh Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these things, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, 
a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates, the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you, even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. In this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, welcome to one and all to our beautiful cathedral this afternoon as we come together to celebrate Holy Mass on this special occasion, our annual Diocesan Scouting and Youth Ministry Awards Mass. Always a beautiful and happy and blessed occasion for our entire diocesan church. So welcome to one and all. And first of all, congratulations to all the young people who are being honored today, either for their involvement in scouting or in youth ministry of the church. Congratulations to all of you. We're very proud of you and grateful to you for your commitment and the achievements you have made. And we pray that God will bless you today and in all the days to come in the future. You know that someday, in not too distant future, you will be the adults who are the leaders in our church and in our whole community. And with that in mind, we, we certainly hope and pray today that you will always remain close to God and close to the church, that you will be strong in faith. You know, you can have all the success, all the material success in the world, but if you do not have faith, then your life will still be empty. Your life will be incomplete. So stay close to God. Stay close to the church. Be strong in faith, and the Lord will bless and reward all of your future endeavors. We need you to have faith, and we need your leadership now and certainly the days to come. And a word of thanks to all the adults also who are here today who are involved in scouting or in youth ministry. Thank you for sharing your time and your talents with the young people. Thank you for the good example of service and leadership you give to them. Special word of thanks to members of our diocesan staff who have worked hard to prepare our celebration today, and thanks to everyone who is assisting with our Mass in any particular way. A special word of welcome and thanks to our priests who are with us today, and a very good number are con celebrating, and also our deacons who are assisting with Holy Mass this afternoon. You know, as, as we gather for Mass today, we want to remember that we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Diocese of Providence. The image of that, the logo for that, is on the front page of the program booklet that you have with you today. And during this year of our anniversary, we are thanking God for all the gifts and blessings he has given 
to this church for 150 years. God's been so good to us. On occasions like this, we need to stop and remember that and thank God for his goodness and his love. It's also an opportunity for us not just to think about the past, but also to look to the future and to renew our faith, to renew our commitment, and to welcome all the challenges that await us in the future. We embrace the future with the same faith and hope and love that this church has always had in its history. It's a journey of faith for us as we continue as a church to carry on the work of Jesus in our time and in our place. The journey of the history of this diocese. And today as we come together for Mass, we find ourselves in the midst of another journey, the journey of the season of Lent. In the Gospel today, which is always used on the second Sunday of Lent, is about the Gospel of the Transfiguration of Christ. When Jesus went up on the mountaintop with his disciples, he was transfigured before their eyes, and his glory, his divinity, was allowed to shine forth. It was an important moment in the life of Jesus, an important moment as well for the disciples, Peter, and James and John who were with Jesus because they could glimpse for just a moment the glory of Christ, the divinity of Christ that was usually shielded by his, his human nature. And the disciples would have to remember this moment of divinity and glory because in the not too distant future, they would see Jesus and his human nature. They would see him in his brutal suffering, his passion and his death. In those moments of suffering and abasement, they would have to remember who this really was, that indeed it was the Son of God. And that moment of glory would sustain them and strengthen them in their faith going forward. Transfiguration is a beautiful, spectacular gospel filled with great inspiration and meaning. And it always has struck me that it also serves as a summary of our Christian life. The process of transformation, the transfiguration is something we go through as Christians. And it always begins right here at the altar of the Lord. As the bread and wine are transfigured, transformed, in a very special kind of transformation, into the body and blood of Christ. That's the first transformation that takes place. And then we receive Holy Communion, and we become what we have received. We are transformed into the icons and the images of Christ as we try to grow in holiness and faith every day. Every day we try to become more like Jesus in our thoughts and our words and our deeds. But it's the Eucharist that helps us to do that. We too are transfigured. We too are transformed from the lowliness of our human nature into icons and images of Jesus in the world. And that's the next transfiguration that takes place, next transformation, as we leave our churches and we go into the world and by our thoughts and our words and our deeds, we try to change the world, we try to transform the world, transfigure the world, the secular order, into the kingdom of God. We become the salt of the earth and the light of the world that makes a difference, a positive difference in the world around us because of our discipleship, our following of Christ. Then the whole world is transformed by our presence in the world. We are the leaven, the leaven that makes all the difference in the world around us. It starts here in the Holy Eucharist, comes into us and we are transformed. We enter the world to transform the world into the kingdom of God. That's the goal of every Christian, of every Catholic, that we will be transformed by our encounter with Christ. I wonder to the young people who are here today and, and for the adults as well, have you ever, has your life ever been changed by someone that you met in your life? perhaps by a teacher or a mentor or a coach, or as we go through life, maybe a friend who becomes our spouse, our husband or her wife. Has your life ever been changed by someone you've met and encountered? 
And have you ever changed someone that you've met by your example and your leadership and your faith? Well, I hope that's the case because we all need those examples and those transformative experiences in our life. But the fact is, dear young friends, youth and adults who are here today, you will never meet anyone in your life who is more important than Jesus. You will never meet anyone in your life who is more important than Jesus. Because once you have met Jesus, your life will never be the same again. We talk about meeting Jesus, I don't mean just as some historical character you read about in a book or in history, but in a living encounter with Jesus, to meet him and to know him and to love him. If you come to know Jesus, your life will never be the same again. He will change you. He will be the most important person in your life. Once you have met Jesus, truly met him and encountered him, your life will be immersed in his. You will hunger for his words and his wisdom. Once you have met Jesus, you'll learn from his example, and you'll try to incorporate his vision and his values in your life. And once you have met Jesus, really met Jesus, you'll be anxious to share his good news with other people and to make the world a better and brighter place in which to live. Just as the disciples encountered Jesus in the mountain transfiguration, that's our goal too, to meet Jesus and to have him change our lives. Let that be our hope and our prayer and our commitment this day that we will be changed by Christ, that we will change the world in his name. God bless you. Together now, let us stand and profess the faith we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in God's presence and his compassion and care for us every day, we come before him to offer these prayers. <coughs> for Pope Francis, Bishop Tobin, Bishop Evans, all priests, religious, and lay people who serve the church community, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the youth of our church, that they continue to bring the light of Christ to others and a joyful energy to our faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of today's award recipients, that they may continue to grow in their faith and evangelize our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all in the midst of discerning their life's vocation, may they be open to the path that leads them closer to our Lord and Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the midst of war, especially in the Ukraine, and those displaced by this violence, may they be blessed 
with generous and caring people to assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those struggling with the burdens they may bear, especially those who are ill or in pain, may they be strengthened by their faith and find courage to carry on, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased members of our community, especially Raymond Gologli, Arthur Keegan, Albert Beauvoir, who are remembered in a special way at this Mass, may they experience eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that through our faithful observance of Lent, you will help us all to grow in the image and the likeness of Christ, and then be inspired to take his good news into our world. Hear these prayers offered in faith and confidence and trust, and answer them through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Accepted by our Lord, may our sacrifice and such as they be pleasing to the Lord God. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name. Good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <coughs> We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, our auxiliary Bishop Robert, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other the side of peace. On you Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
we bless and share the blood of Christ outpoured to not one cup one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord you satisfy
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <laughs>
me. Listen to Trina when you speak. Give me a kiss like I can feel the juice. Good afternoon. I am Norma Malachowski, Chairperson of the Bishop's Catholic Committee on Scouting. Before we begin our award ceremony, I would like to acknowledge our invited guests. From Girl Scouts of Southeastern New England, Narragansett Council Scouts BSA, thank you for joining us for our celebration. Of course, we have the dedicated members of our Bishop's Catholic Committee on Scouting with us today as well, including Father Stephen Batty, Diocesan Scout Chaplain, and also, though unable to join us in person, Sister Diane Russo, our Pastoral Associate. Please read the information provided in your program booklet for more details on all of the recognitions that we will now present. As we begin the presentation of the awards portion of our program, we ask that you kindly hold your applause until all names are read for each award. The following three Girl Scouts have fulfilled all the requirements for the I Live My Faith Award. The recipients are Kristen Goods, Emma Quigley, and Taryn Blaze. The following American Heritage Girl has fulfilled all the requirements for the Spirit Alive Award. The recipient is Amanda Abbott. The following five scouts have completed the requirements for the Ad Altari Day religious emblem. Logan Pollard. Luca Pollard. Joshua Stockwell. John Dion, and Finn Riccio. <clears throat> 
three scouts have completed the requirements for the Pope Pius XII award. Raymond Murray, Christopher Stone, and Daniel Vittoria. This year, we honor one American Heritage Girl being presented the Pillars of Faith Service to God Award for earning all four National Catholic Religious Scouting Awards. The Family of God, I Live My Faith, the Marian Medal, and the Spirit Alive. This year's recipient is Amanda Abbott. The Edward McLaughlin Award is given to the Scout Unit, which earns the highest number of Adaltari Day and Pope Pius XII emblems totaled. It is given in memory of Mr. Edward A. McLaughlin, Jr., past member and vice chair of the Bishop's Catholic Committee on Scouting. Boy Scout Troop 6 Bristol, St. Mary Church Bristol, Mr. Roy Leffingwell, Scoutmaster. The Bronze Pelican Award is given to an adult scouter in recognition for his or her positive examples as a Catholic influencing scouts to live a good Catholic Christian life through the nurturing of spiritual growth. Bishop, I present our recipient, Ms. Amy Giamarco. And this year, we would like to recognize the CEO of Girl Scouts of Southeastern New England, who is retiring next month after a lifetime committed to the Girl Scouts. We thank you for your support and for all you have done for Catholic Scouts and for, Scouts in, uh, for Girl Scouts in general. Ms. Pam Hyland. I'm Susan Vargas, a Catholic Youth Ministry staff member. And before we begin with the presentation of this year's awards, we would like to recognize last year's recipients of both of these national awards that were presented locally due to the complications of the pandemic. I will read all of their names and ask any of them who are present today to please stand and remain standing until all are named. We will then applaud for all of them, including those who may be with us via live streaming. Receiving the Companions on the Journey, Cynthia Cavanaugh, Susan Gasparo, William Johnston, Mark Tebow, and Joseph Toppy. Congratulations to the 2021 Companions on the Journey Award recipients. The 2021 St. Timothy Award recipients, Matthew Bado, Catherine Bloomer, Grace Dobrinsky, Paul Duquette, Olivia Klein, Chatham McCloskey, Carolina Roy, Mary Kate Tillinghast. 
Congratulations to the 2021 recipients of the St. Timothy Award. I invite you to please read the information provided in your program booklet for more details on all of the 2022 recipients that we will now present to. Bishop Thomas Tobin and Louise Duce Dusso, the Director of Catholic Youth Ministry, will present the awards. The Companions on the Journey Award. Would all nine of the recipients please follow the usher into the sanctuary? The Companions on the Journey Award is a national youth ministry award given to adults in this diocese who have given a minimum of five years service in ministry to youth. The award's merits are based on faith witness, moral integrity, dedicated service, and Christian leadership. Lily Arujo, the Prout School, St. Mark Cranston. Tori Canario, Rejoice and Hope Youth Center, St. Barnabas, Portsmouth. Jason and Ashley Cotting, Deanery 8, St. Philip Greenville. Alexander Quaylar, Deanery 5, St. Patrick Providence. Carlene Fontaine, Deanery 3, Holy Trinity, Woonsocket. Jamal Gomes, Bishop Hendrickson High School, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Seekonk. Sarah Mulholland, St. Patrick Academy, St. Patrick Providence. Terry Murray, St. Raphael Academy, St. Raymond, Providence. Jane Ponce, Mount St. Charles Academy, St. Joseph Woonsocket. Congratulations to the 2022 Companions on the Journey recipients. The St. Timothy Award. Would the 14 recipients of this award please follow the usher into the sanctuary? The St. Timothy Award is the most prestigious Catholic award given to youth and young adults in the country. It is a national award given by a particular diocese to those who exemplify the highest caliber, especially in moral integrity, Christian leadership, and service. The recipients are Emily Bamford, Deanery 7, St. Thomas More, Narragansett. Grace Barden, Rejoice and Hope Youth Center, St. Michael, Georgiaville. James Kuhlman, St. Raphael Academy, St. Patrick, Providence. Thomas Edsel, Deanery 8, St. Philip, Greenville. Shayla Kenyon, Father Merritt CYO Center, Holy Trinity, Woonsocket. Daniel Larios, St. Patrick Academy, St. Charles Borromeo. Joseph Lavalle, The Prout School, St. Mary, Star of the Sea. Mark Marandola, Jr., LaSalle Academy, Our Lady of Mercy, East Greenwich. Alexander Muto, Deanery 4, Saints Rose and Clement, Warwick. Maria Plant, Deanery 3, Holy Trinity, Woonsocket. Braden Shields, Bishop Hendrickson High School, St. Luke Barrington. 
Aidan Skids, Deanery 7, Christ the King, Kingston. Aidan Sylvester, Mount St. Charles Academy, St. Jude, Lincoln. David Wilson, Rejoice and Hope Youth Center, St. Anthony, West Warwick. Congratulations to the 2022 St. Timothy Award recipients. We'd like to thank everyone who was involved in making this day memorable, with special thanks, of course, to you, Bishop Tobin, for your commitment to all aspects of youth ministry, including scouting. Our deep gratitude goes to all those who took the time to nominate our award recipients. As stated in the booklet, photos taken today are available for purchase through the Rhode Island Catholic website or the link from the diocesan website. We ask that anyone wishing individual photos to please form a line along the altar rail on the organ side of the cathedral, and we thank you for your cooperation. It's vital that the center aisle not be blocked so persons wishing to exit may do so. And I'm not sure, Bishop, if you would care to say anything. <laughs> I never missed an opportunity to say a couple of nice words. But again, my sincere congratulations to one and all of the young people and the adults who are recognized today. Your recognition, the awards you received were very, very well deserved. We're so proud of you and grateful to you for the good work you're doing in our church and our community. May this be not the end of your recognition, not the end of your service, but just another chapter and a new beginning as you go forward. And again, my thanks to all those involved in scouting and youth ministry throughout the diocese for your good example, for your leadership and service, and for taking the time to share your time and, and your talent and your own faith with these young people. We will be available for pictures right up here. If you can just follow the instructions that um, were just given, they will move along very, very quickly. But as we conclude now, Let's just pause with a final prayer and ask our Blessed Mother Mary to accompany us and walk with us every step of the way as we conclude our ceremony today. Let's pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Providence. Pray for us. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and go in peace. Again, just to repeat, if you would like to have pictures taken with Bishop Tobin, please form a line along the altar rail by the organ, that organ side. Thank you again.